Well, thanks very much to the IFSCC uh, um, for inviting me to speak today. Um, this is um, a repeat of a talk I gave locally in uh, the SES Northwest um, uh, symposium mini seminar on uh, effects of aging and menopause on hair and skin. Um, so uh, I hope you find it interesting. I think it's an interesting category for hair that uh, isn't often spoken about, but uh, obviously is very important to consumers and does give you opportunities to do some interesting things with your brands. So I have got some uh, history, shall we say, with working with hair aging, uh, having come across it in my professional life a few times in, in large projects that I've been working on. Um, Back in 1999, yes, I'm that old, uh, I was working for Unilever and I was working for a brand called Organics, um, which I think still exists in South Africa. If anyone from South Africa is there, you'll probably still know it. But uh, in most of Europe and North America and the rest of the world, I think it's, it's gone now. Uh, but at the time, it was a big brand. Uh, it was all talking about how to nourish uh, the scalp and the follicles to encourage healthier hair. And um, we had a, a range, uh, a sub range uh, that we launched uh, called Organics Vital, which was all about anti-aging and about um, caring for your hair as you got older. And uh, it was quite innovative at the time because not many brands were talking yet about um, hair aging and uh, and, and and sort of fighting hair aging through the way you use your shampoos and conditioners. Um, so that was quite a big project. And uh, I laugh because, uh, to myself sometimes when I think of this project because uh, I pulled together some, some collagen extracts uh, and some amino acids and some other uh, interesting ingredients and uh, put them all together for the product and for the claims. And... Uh, drafted a patent, never expecting it to get um, published. But uh, of all the patents that I've uh, drafted and put forward, uh, I've always surprised that this one just went straight through to being published uh, without a hitch. <laughs> so uh, I've still got a patent from this project. Then when I moved on to, uh, to a company called Pizzo Cousins, I worked on a brand called Charles Worthington, and then we had another project on um, anti-aging for a brand, uh, a sub-brand called Time Defy. Uh, again, trying to uh, counteract the effects of uh, hair aging. Uh, and, you know, again, sort of maybe using some of the insights I had from the, the Unilever projects in terms of uh, the understandings of the consumers and the publications that I'd read, um, we, we, we came up with some nice claims as well. So, more recently, I have not been employed by uh, Procter & Gamble and Pantene, I have to point out. I have noticed that it's come round again that one of the major brands is talking about um, hair ageing. And in this case, uh, they've gone for an interesting angle on it. They've um, started talking about uh, menopause and designing products to counteract menopause, uh, which I thought was an interesting way of targeting that market. Um, uh, of segmenting that market. So today, what I'm going to try and do for you, using this experience I've had from these projects, um, is to try and give you an overview of what goes on with hair and ageing, and to show you the major things that are happening, and then try and think of it rationally about what can you do as a formulator, as a cosmetic scientist, to really... Um, counteract these things. Uh, I'll go through hair graying, I'll go through the changes in hair density, I'll tell you about the changes in hair diameter and importantly the changes in scalp sebum and hair dryness and fibre shape and shine, some interesting findings there. I'll give you an idea of all the different things that are changing um, on your consumer's hair. Let's start with the big one, the very obvious one, which is hair graying. Thank you. 